hello guys welcome to another lecture of discrete time control system and uh, today we are going to uh, study the design based on the root locus and within that topic we will be studying the basic knowledge regarding the angle and magnitude criterion basic rules for constructing the root locus and the impact of pole zero cancellation overall in overall the system impulse transfer function and uh, also the impact of sampling frequency uh, variation over the digital control system and in the end the impact of varying the sampling frequency over the transient response now the, why we require a design based on the root locus root locus help us to investigate the system stability in addition to that of the transient response and the characteristic equation especially in the case when one need to know the effect of system gain and the sample period over the output uh, characteristic of that uh, response the rules that are being presented in the uh, linear control system by Norman Nice for the continuous time system will be considered as same uh, for the uh, discrete time control system as well so here we will be using the characteristic equation in the z transform 1 plus g of z and h of z that's equal to 0 which is the characteristic equation of the system now what is the angle and the magnitude condition if we have been given the characteristic equation in many LTI system we may have two main types of the characteristic equation uh, mainly as 1 plus g of z and h of z equal to 0 or uh, sometimes uh, we do the, do the placement of the sampler uh, we may we might also get this form of the equation as 1 plus g h of z is equal to 0 so we can uh, represent both of these equa uh, equation in term of a one unique symbol uh, let's say that f of z which is equal to g of z h of z that's equal to 0 or f of z equal to g of h of z that's equal to z also uh, just correct yourself uh, i have removed this equal to zero uh, that was mistakenly written on both of these terms actually i have just replaced the f of z in term of this g of z h of z and f of z equal to g h of z okay note that these uh, uh, this f of z is actually an open loop transfer function uh, we can also form a closed loop transfer function by just replacing it by 1 plus f of z equal to 0 or in simple word we can also say that f of z equal to minus 1 since f of z is a complex quantity so by uh, angle condition uh, it should be plus minus 180 degree uh, to that of the 2k plus 1 the angle should be uh, uh, the multiple factor of uh, this combination where k is actually equal to 0 1 2 and on so on and by magnitude criteria the overall magnitude of open loop transfer function should be equal to 1 uh, if uh, the value of z that has been selected uh, in that region that satisfy the both condition 1 and 2 are the point on the root locus and are roots of the characteristic equation all right i have summarized the basic rules for constructing the root locus uh, so these are just the summarized point i hope that you will understand from these uh, points the first point is that you need to find the characteristic equation and uh, the mainly the characteristic equation is being characterized as 1 plus g of z h of z equal to 0 and uh, if you apply the system generally we just represent it by uh, 1 plus the k is the being multiplied as a form of the k -in. and these are the 0 z plus 1 z plus z1 and to the z plus z2 and so on divided by the poles of the system z plus p1 into z plus p2 and so on that's actually equal to 0 in second point you need to evaluate the starting and the ending point of the root loci you can easily do this by following the uh, the points from a to f the point on the root loci lies for the value of k is equal to 0 are only the open loop poles 
if you place the uh, solve it for the uh, this equation yeah the uh, this term will be simplified as the by a cross multiplication with this pole and if you place the k is equal to 0 this whole zeros will be uh, terminated from this equation and only the things that will be left behind will be the uh, open loop poles okay now the point on the root loci that lies for the value of the k is equal to infinite are only the open loop zero so you can uh, easily do that by just mentioning it uh, substituting the value of k and you will get only the zeros in this equation as the value of k is increased from zero the root locus start from the open loop poles as just being mentioned in this 1a and terminates at the open loop zero for the value of k that's equal to infinity now if you see this diagram there is a unit circle and suppose that you are moving from this point that is at the k is equal to zero if you extend from this uh, zero value of the k n of k toward the infinity you will actually move from this open loop if they it's an open loop pole and you will extend it toward the open loop zero if it is over here it's, it is a zero over here and k, the pole is over here so this is it in point e it says that if the number of closed loop poles n is same as that of the open loop poles then the number of branches terminating at the finite open loop pole is equal to m number of open loop zeros okay uh, what does it actually means that uh, if we have uh, the open loop transfer function f of z and there are uh, number of poles and we have the closed loop transfer function let's say the 1 plus f of z and it also has the number of poles if these two in these two conditions if the number of poles are actually same uh, then it means that uh, the number of branches that are being terminating at the open loop pole is actually equal to the number of open loop zeros fine so it's actually telling you about the number of branches and how many branches will be there and the remaining branches terminating at the infinity is found by subtracting the n minus m along the asymptote okay in the third point it says that you need to determine the root loci on the real axis the root loci on the real axis are found by determining the open loop poles and zeros lying on the real axis okay uh, whereas the conjugate complex poles that means that they, if they are not on the uh, real axis they are some way in between the real and the imaginary axis the poles and the zeros that are being lying over there have no effect on the location of the root loci because they add overall 360 degree in the overall angle contribution consider the test point on the real axis if the number of real poles and the zeros on the right of the test point is odd then it means that the point that you have selected it lies on the root locus in fourth point it says that you need to determine the asymptotes of the root loci if the test point let's say it has been tested over the location of z is located far away from the origin then the angles of all the complex quantity may be considered same one open loop zero and open loop pole that cancel each other the effect that are being lying over the far away from the origin and for such point of z the root loci must be asymptotic to the straight line and their angles are actually calculated as by plus minus 180 degree into 2n plus 1 divided by n minus 1 where n is the 0 1 2 or any of the number that you want to calculate in fifth step you need to find the break in and break away points mostly such points lie on the real axis 
or occur on the conjugate pairs. If the root locus lie between two adjacent open loop poles on the real axis, it must be remembered, then there exists at least one breakaway point between two poles. If the root locus lie between two adjacent open loop zeros on the real axis, then there exists at least one break in point between two zeros. Now, this can be concluded that the breakaway points might exist between two adjacent poles. However, one break in point may exist between two adjacent zeros.